This right here is Pierre-Luc Dubois, a man who just recently has arguably became the most hated player in the game. Move over Brad Marchand, Tom Wilson, fill in the blank. The NHL has a new villain. Last offseason, LA would pay a king's ransom to the Winnipeg Jets, where Pierre-Luc Dubois would sign a massive extension, 8.5 million, over eight years to be exact. But considering that Dubois was a highly sought upon big body goal scoring center. Trying to break in and does, fights off the check, what a goal! Connor moves in, Dubois around Brodine, he scores! It made sense from face value. Yes, Dubois had some massive red flags, but when you consider the makeup of this LA Kings roster, this deal could keep the Kings as contenders for a long time. Kopitar is getting older, Quinton Byfield is developing into a stud. Build around one man in on goal, SCORE! And let's not forget Brant Clark, who has been dominating the AHL at an unprecedented rate. Except, Dubois this season was a complete and utter disaster. Low effort, bad attitude, the worst production of his career. And not only was he not producing in the playoffs, but think about the optics here. During the Kings and Oilers five game series, Dubois would amass 20 penalty minutes. 20 penalty minutes against the best power play in hockey. A power play that is scoring at a 45% rate. So not only are you not producing, but this man was single handedly costing his team wins. This is not an example. Exaggeration. Dubois alone in this series created three goals against from his penalties, two of which would single handedly cement an Edmonton win. His penalty in game five would lead to Drysaddle scoring the game winning goal in a 2 2 tie. Dubois makes a good defensive play, but Dubois, Dubois is gonna get a penalty. He grabs onto Drysaddle's face and pulls him down. Not only that, he would lose control of his stick, which also catches Drysaddle in the face. Also, YouTube is good, no injuries which would lead to the commentators freaking out because they called it a holding. Catch up, you take the guy down, that's nowhere near a hold. Which, I mean it wasn't, but it could have been elbowing or head contact. So does it really matter if he's assigned the wrong penalty? I don't think so. Because I kid you not, on the ensuing power play, Leon Dreisaitl would get his revenge, where he would score the series clinching goal. Behind the net, Dreisaitl, what a Because of this, the Kings are at a crossroad. Right now, he is 25. The Kings buy him out before June, they will only have to pay out one third of his contract. But if they wait, and Dubois turns 26 this June, they will owe him two thirds of his contract. So right now, they have to decide whether to keep him with the hopes of attitude, effort, and overall game being worth 8.5 million, or buy him out, which carries the cap penalty up until 2038. But here's the thing, this is not new drama. This has been an ongoing problem since the draft. Because while researching his career, I would discover something truly shocking. A stat that would blow my mind. And today's video is sponsored by Bet99, Canada's premier sportsbook made by Canadians for Canadians. How do you feel about that? As it's my goal with these ad reads to provide messaging on safe and responsible sports betting practices. I've been sports betting for years now and I have fun with it because I stay within my limits. I like to start with 10, 20 bucks and see how high I can get it. My current record now is 500 bucks, which I cashed out, car payment done like that, are you kidding me? And from today's games, I am focusing on player shots. Seth Jarvis has been on a heater this playoffs, and his over under on shots for today's game is only 1.5. Some of you may be like, wow, you made $10, good job. You rebet that 30 bucks, it turns into 45. Do you see what I'm getting at here? I like to test my knowledge, it's a fun little game for me. This offer is not available in Ontario. You must be 19 plus to play, and please bet responsibly. During the 2016 NHL draft, the Blue Jackets would shock the draft floor, where they would select Pierre Luc Dubois. Now, he was ranked between 5 and 10 by most scouts, but considering he was a 6 foot 3 goal scoring center, it made sense. However, in his draft plus one season, we would get our first taste of Pierre Luc Dubois drama after getting cut in the Blue Jackets camp. Dubois was sent back down to juniors, where it was reported that Dubois came back with a questionable attitude even before he had this reputation. Because here's the thing, the Screaming Eagles weren't a great team. Dubois got a taste of the NHL, and if he was going back to the queue, he wanted to dominate. Yet, his game would decline as he would put up 18 points in 20 games, which is brutal production from a third overall pick. And in this stretch, 
his team had 13 wins and 17 losses. Thus, they would trade Dubois for scraps relative to his third overall pick status. And most analysts had the perception, he's on a bad team, this man needs a change of scenery. The Screaming Eagles are going nowhere, Dubois now has a chance to win. But, right after Dubois left Cape Breton, this team, without their star, would go on to win 7 games in a row. With Dubois, they would have a 13-17 and record. Without Dubois, they would go 23-15, and as they went from a disaster season to finishing the year in the playoffs. But at this point, keep in mind, Dubois did not have the label of a locker room cancer. At this point, it was pure coincidence. Yet, it just kept happening in Dubois' final season with Columbus, where we would witness the dreaded zero effort shift. Alongside of a heated exchange with John Tortorella, Pierre-Luc Dubois would request a trade, where he would be shipped to Winnipeg for Patrick Laine. And even though Columbus lost their number one center, even though Patrick Laine was injured, the Blue Jackets would have a far better season. With Dubois, they would have a 4.29 point percent Percentage. So 42.9% of games resulted in a point for Columbus. And after PLD left, Columbus would jump up to a 49.4 point percentage. But okay, this is just one season. If we now look at Winnipeg, with Dubois, they had a 53% winning percentage. Meaning, they were a bubble team on the verge of the playoffs. They would then ship out Dubois, and even though the Jets lost a quote-unquote elite center, even though Gabe Velarde dealt with injuries, the Jets were one of the best teams this season, as they would finish with a 67.1 winning percentage. LA would pay a king's ransom, but considering that Velarde had injury issues, and Dubois provided more stability and a more proven track record, you would assume that Pure Luke Dubois was the missing piece. But before Dubois, the Kings had a 63.4 point percentage. With Dubois, they would regress to 63.4. And to some extent, it's absurd to attribute a team's record to a single player, and I get that, but at some point, you can't just ignore that every team he's played for, which goes all the way back to 2016 in the QMJHL, has seen an improved record without Dubois on their team. If it was just one team where this happens, write it off as a coincidence. If it's two teams, it is still a coincidence. Three teams? Now we're starting to see a trend. Four teams? Okay something is wrong here. It's absurd. The combined point percentage with him on the team is 53.85%. Without him, it's 60%. And this may not seem like a big decline, but this right here is the exact point percentage difference between making the playoffs and getting sent home packing. If we take a look at the best teams in the league, their success is rooted to developing a strong culture. Everyone on the team is bought into the system. Everyone is putting in the work to keep pushing forward. The best example of this is the Boston Bruins. Under Zdeno Chara, they were able to develop the best culture in the NHL. They would win a cup, multiple finals appearances, Big Z retires, but this culture is instilled in Patrice Bergeron. Bergeron retires, but this culture is instilled in Brad Marchand and David Pasternak. And even though their roster has seen some serious downgrades, they remain a top team in the league, simply due to their strong team culture. Having a player who doesn't buy into systems, put in the work, who can't handle the heat of a strict coach like John Tortorella, it's like having a broken link in a chain. That broken link will eventually make the team collapse. It's inevitable, and I don't know Dubois personally. All of you watching this video don't know him personally, and I don't like tossing out the term locker room cancer loosely, as there's a chance he's a good teammate putting in the work, and all of this is just one big coincidence. But the proof is in the pudding. But here's the thing, I believe in first and second chances. I believe Dubois can get his stuff together and be a great player for the Kings. But all this is a big what if. So what do you think? Are the stats I found just a pure coincidence? Or is there some serious problems surrounding PLD? Thank you again to Bet99 for sponsoring today's video. And as always, thanks for watching.